All right, everybody, we're going to be doing a new series, starting off with this one. This will be the first one in the series. This will be highlighting one particular card every week, and we plan to do them every Friday uh, as just kind of a kickoff into the weekend. Um, not always going to be necessarily valuable cards or super expensive cards can be, or they could be just uh, bottom basement cards, but something interesting, either an error card or something interesting about that card that I felt, you know, newsworthy or relevant or just something interesting that I wanted to share. So we're going to start it off this week with the first card of the series is going to be a 1990 to 1991 NBA Hoops Mark Jackson card. Now, Mark Jackson was the first round pick, 18th overall by the New York Knicks in 1987. He went to college at St. John's from 1983 to 1987. So we're talking about a guy that was drafted in 1987. So why are we talking about a 1990 card? Well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so obviously not his rookie card a couple years into the league. Uh, this particular picture was taken during the 1989 to 1990 season uh, for the NBA Hoops product that is then released in the spring of 1990. So Mark Jackson played seven of his 17 seasons in the NBA for the New York Knicks. He then went on to play for many other teams and coached for the Golden State Warriors from 2011 to 2014, including coaching uh, such superstars like Stephen Curry. Uh, he is now the commentator, or is now a commentator for ESPN for their NBA product. This particular card, the 1990 NBA Hoops Mark Jackson card, is now famous or infamous due to not the player on the card that's highlighted, Mark Jackson, but due to the background. So in the background, you can see the fans and the stands. And if you look closely at the crowd, you can see two young males sitting courtside. Those individuals have been now identified as Joseph Lyle Menendez and Eric Galen Menendez, also known as the Menendez brothers. Now, most people have probably heard of the, Men the Menendez brothers, uh, even if you don't know the full story about them. These brothers grew up in Beverly Hills into a very affluent family, uh, grew up rich, and uh, as a result of their father's success in business. So, uh, like I said, they grew up. They grew up in Beverly Hills and were convicted in 1996 for the murders of their parents, Jose and Mary, who went by Kitty Menendez. Their parents' estate was reportedly worth 14 and a half million dollars, which the prosecution claimed that they murdered their parents to secure that inheritance of their father's multi-million dollar estate as well as potential insurance money. Now, there's also some stories out there that appear to be true that uh, the same day that their parents were murdered, uh, the mother, Kitty, was actually changing her will, um, specifically changing her will to take the two sons out of the will in front of them. That they knew it was happening. They knew that their parents were taking them out of their will uh, because of just a myriad of different reasons. Uh, but that uh, she didn't care if they knew that they were being disinherited, that, uh, that they didn't deserve a dime of the parents' money. Uh, actually, later that evening is when they went about the act of killing both parents in the house in their home in Beverly Hills and uh, then called the police uh, to notify them that their parents had been murdered. So the brothers killed their parents on, uh, on August 20th, 1989 is when, their, uh, was when the parents died. They were not originally considered suspects of the murder. They were the ones, uh, like I said, that found the bodies and called the police, had the investigation come over. Uh, however, after lavish spending sprees and other information, the evidence that came about, the investigators began drawing it, uh, placing their attention uh, to 
Eric and Lyle. Uh, but yeah, so they started drawing the attention of the investigators. They were buying cars. They were buying watches. One of them even bought a restaurant uh, or bar in, I believe it was New Jersey or New York. They made many trips, including um, all over the country, uh, including many trips to New York. Uh, they would eventually buy courtside seats. I believe they frequently bought courtside seats to New York Knicks games. Uh, this was not the first game. New this was not the first New York Knicks game they had ever been to, uh, so they would e they would often buy New York Knicks floor seats from scalpers outside, and that is how they found their way inadvertently onto a basketball card, and are the subject of today's card spotlight. The Menendez brothers were arrested March eighth, nineteen ninety, after investigators finally drew uh, their sights on them and pegged them for the murders. Interestingly enough, March 8th, 1990, this is around when the NBA Hoops product would have been released. So it's released in the spring in that March-April time frame. So around the time of the arrest is when this product came out. Now, nobody knew at the time that, uh, that these guys were on there. Nobody's paying attention to who's in the crowd, much less uh, drawing the lines together there. They were sentenced to life in prison without parole on July 2nd, 1996. The defense claimed that they murdered their, that they committed the murders in fear that their father would kill them after learning that they would expose him for years of sexual, emotional, and physical abuse. Uh, that uh, There was some family friends that corroborated this evidence that they had come to them and, and talked about the abuse that the father had done and that the mother knew about this abuse and did nothing. Um, so they were claiming kind of self-defense. We had to. He was going to kill us, etc. But uh, that didn't really fly. Uh, the first trials uh, for each brother were done separately. Each of those trials ended in a mistrial. The second trial that took place, they were tried together, and the evidence of the alleged abuse was not admitted at trial, and they were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. So that is what happened there. This, of course, happened in the 90s. Um, it took years for this to finally be found out. It was discovered in 2018 via a Reddit post that really didn't draw a lot of attention until almost a year later when a subsequent t tweet went viral and created a firestorm of speculation. That speculation was finally put to rest when Lyle was interviewed about this in 2019 and confirmed that indeed he and his brother Eric were at that game and that they are the ones pictured on that card of Mark Jackson. So that's how the 1990, 1991 NBA hoops Mark Jackson card became infamous and even though just a base card uh, not a rookie card you know third fourth year into the league really gained a lot of traction even in the even a junk era product like that a couple years ago just really took off and sold a bunch of uh, those cards you know they were they hit eBay really quickly once all this came about and people were snatching them up from you know marketplaces including eBay and everywhere else uh, that they could get their hands on them now you can find them pretty frequently on eBay or wherever uh, without without much ado uh, you know they're definitely not very expensive cards because they're so prolific and uh, can be found uh, pretty much anywhere pretty cheaply so that's going to do it for our first card spotlight it's the 1990 NBA hoops Mark Jackson card hope you enjoyed if you did Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more content. Let me know what you think about this card and everything else.